Are you a civil engineer or site supervisor struggling to make quick decisions on site? Don't worry. In this video, we'll uncover the most important thumb rules for concrete work. Simple shortcuts that save time, guide your design, and keep your construction safe and efficient. Whether you're checking slab thickness, reinforcement spacing, or curing practices, these rules will make your work faster and smarter. Let's get started. Concrete sampling and handling. When we talk about concrete sampling, time is critical. The sampling must be completed within 15 minutes because quick sampling ensures the concrete does not lose moisture or change properties before the test begins. The storage water temperature should be 23 plus 2 degrees centigrade, which helps maintain the sample's condition so the strength results remain accurate. To prepare curing water, 3 grams of calcium hydroxide per liter is added. This prevents leaching of lime and helps the concrete retain its design strength. The purpose of adding calcium hydroxide is to keep the water saturated and chemically stable. The responsibility lies with a concrete technician, a trained person who ensures the sample is taken, handled, and cured properly without errors. Finally, for transporting samples, they should be moved only after eight hours of final setting so they are strong enough and must reach the laboratory within four hours to avoid cracks or damage due to long delays. Sulfur compound, capping. In capping tests, we use sulfur compounds. The ignition temperature is 227 degrees centigrade, and it's important to know this to prevent fire hazards. The compound should be heated carefully to a range between 129 and 143 degrees centigrade. At this temperature, it is fluid enough for use, but not overheated. Before compressive strength testing, we must wait at least two hours when the strength is below 5,000 psi, allowing the caps to harden and provide a stable surface for testing. Slump test. One of the most common site tests is the slump test, carried out as per ASTM C143. This ensures consistency in measuring the workability of fresh concrete worldwide. The test requires essential tools, such as a slump cone, a tamping rod, a measuring tape, a base plate, and a scoop. Each tool has a specific role in ensuring accurate measurement. When removing the slump cone, it must be lifted in 5 plus 2 seconds, preventing any disturbance that might affect the slump measurement. The procedure is simple, but precise. Fill the cone in three layers, each layer rotted 25 times to ensure compaction. Level the top surface. Lift the cone upward, steadily, within the allowed time. Finally, measure the slump with a tape to know the workability of the concrete mix. Fresh concrete at site. When fresh concrete is poured at the site, temperature is crucial. According to Aramco standards, the concrete should not exceed 30 to 32 degrees centigrade. If the temperature is higher, the concrete may set too quickly, which can lead to cracks, reduced strength, and durability issues in the finished structure. Concrete Molds Curing for molds and curing, ASTM C31 is the guiding standard. It provides a reliable procedure to prepare and cure test specimens. The apparatus includes a mold, tamping rod, scoop, and rubber hammer. Each ensures that the sample is properly compacted and shaped. The standard size for a cylinder mold is 6 inches by 12 inches, and the standard size of cube molds are usually 6 by 6 by 6 inches. Concrete should be placed in three layers with 25 rods per layer, ensuring compaction and removing air voids. Before curing, samples must be stored at a temperature between 16 and 27 degrees centigrade, protecting them from extremes of hot or cold. For high-strength concrete requiring 6,000 psi, curing should be done at 20 to 26 degrees centigrade, which maintains hydration and promotes full strength development. Soundness test. The soundness test checks the durability of aggregates. Samples are immersed in solution for 16 to 18 hours, allowing the chemical reaction to occur. For accuracy, the sodium sulfate solution must have a specific gravity between 1.151 and 1 to 174, while the magnesium sulfate solution should be 1.295 to 1 3 cells or 8. The solutions need 48 hours of preparation time to stabilize, and testing is done in five cycles to simulate natural weathering conditions. The solution temperature must be maintained at 21 plus 1 degree centigrade. To prepare the solutions, magnesium sulfate can be mixed as 350 grams of anhydrous salt per liter of water, or 1230 grams of heptahydrate per liter. Sodium sulfate can be mixed as 215 grams of anhydrous per liter, or 700 grams of decahydrate per liter. These concentrations are necessary for proper saturation, ensuring reliable and repeatable results. Sand equivalent test. The sand equivalent test is used to measure the proportion of sand to clay in aggregates. 
The solution temperature must be 21 plus minus 1 degree centigrade to maintain accuracy. The test setup height is 3 feet or 900 millimeters, allowing proper settlement of layers. If using a mechanical shaker, it should operate at 175 plus minus 2 cycles per minute. When using a manual shaker, 100 cycles must be completed within 45 plus minus 5 seconds. With handshaking, the cylinder should be shaken 90 times in 30 seconds, with a throw of about 23 centimeters. Before testing, samples are dried at 110 plus minus 5 degrees centigrade to remove all moisture. After placing the sample in the tube, it must rest for 10 minutes before shaking, allowing the clay to react with the solution. Finally, 85 milliliters of calcium chloride solution per gallon, or 3.8 liters, is added to maintain the correct solution strength. Thank you.